Okay, in this first example, we did this one in class, but we want to determine the reaction at the wall, and we have a fixed support. Um, so in statics, we usually will tell you what kind of support it is, but you just need to learn um, what each support kind of looks like. So if you're still kind of struggling with what are we talking about, you could make yourself a little uh, visual chart that let you reminds you that for each reaction what we could find so with a roller it's like a skateboard or a car we are preventing translation up and down but we could still move side to side and we could still rock okay we could have uh we, we're not resisting a moment okay at a pin okay i can't pull it to the right or to the left i can't pull it up and down but like a teeter-totter okay we have rotation by rotation, I'm not resisting rotation, I don't have an internal moment. This is kind of like a diving board. If you stand on the diving board, we don't have rotation at the wall because in a sense we've got this internal moment that's swoosh, kind of pushing it back up, we're kind of keeping it in place, okay? If it were just pinned, then it would be like a hinge, it will blonk, and it would just blonk down like that, okay? We also have three equations, we can sum forces x, we can sum forces y, and we can sum moments about any given point. So here's our three kind of rules that we can follow. Here's the three unknown types we can have. So I notice this is fixed, so I can go right underneath it if I want, and I can draw a free body diagram. And when I'm fixed, I can have an unknown x, an unknown y, and an unknown moment. And because I'm at a, we're going to call all of these ax, ay, ma. And I have a perpendicular load, another one, and another one. So I have 180 pounds, 300 pounds, 200 pounds, 8 inches, 20 inches, and 18 inches. And one of the things I want to check are units. I have everything in pounds, and I have all my lengths in inches. So I like to just have consistent one unit for force and one unit for length when I do a problem so I don't have to do any conversions during the actual um, solution itself. So let's start with summing forces in the x direction. Okay, so I have my rule. I'm going to sum forces specifically in the x direction. To the right is positive and I'm in static so the sum equals zero. So I have ax starting at the left, come across. I don't have anything else to sum equals zero. So my reaction at the wall, AX, is zero. Do I need to tell you that? Yes, you do. Because if I change the loading and added a load or a cable or a strut to the system, anything that would have an X component, because it's fixed, it could carry that X directional force. So you need to let me know, yes, there could be an X component here. In this loading case, it is zero. Okay, so now I'm going to sum forces in the y direction. Again, here's my rule. Here's the direction. Y, here's the positive, and the rule is that the sum of our forces equals zero. Okay, mass acceleration, but we're not moving anywhere hopefully. So I'm going to start at the left. I have AY minus 200 pounds plus 300 pounds minus 180 pounds, and all of that equals zero. Um, I'm going to move these values using algebra to the right so that Ay is isolated. So Ay equals, so the signs change. Okay, and then I'm going to start summing up. So I have 200, 380. Minus 300, I'm left with 80 pounds. Okay, because it's a positive value, my assumption that I'm going up for my reaction, my resisting force at the wall, um, was correct. So when we give a reaction answer, we are always going to use a magnitude. Okay, so it's not positive or negative, but it is the value. We are always going to use a unit. And then we are going to show the direction of the reaction. If I had gotten negative 80 pounds, okay, so this is just an aside, if I had gotten that it was a negative 80 and I assumed it going up, 
then what I would have found is that it's 80 pounds actually going down and that would have been my answer okay so we assume up we assume positive when I get a positive value my assumption of up was correct if I were to get a negative I would still show the magnitude unit um, but it's actually going down okay so now we can sum moments and it doesn't matter where we sum them because all of the moments when we sum them have to equal zero I'm just going to sum it around point A so if I look at A I do have a moment that could develop and right hand rule positive AX and AY are at point A their distance is zero they don't create a moment but as I go across right to left or left to right I'm going to have minus 200 pounds times 8 inches force distance plus 300 pounds times 18 inches minus 180 pounds times okay if I'm at A I have to march 8 inches and then march 20 more so I have 28 inches and all of this equals zero all of my moments are on one side and they equal zero so I'm going to do algebra I'm going to move all of these things over so I have the moment at A equals positive 200 times 8 minus 300 times 18 plus 180 times 28 and if I work this out I get 1240 pound inches I got a positive value so that counterclockwise assumption that I made okay was a was the correct direction if I had gotten a negative here it would have been 1240 because again the magnitude pound inches but I would have shown the direction as going that way okay how can I check my answer well if I'm in equilibrium then the sum of the moments anywhere I am I don't know how to get this thing to come back and like, focus again okay I, it doesn't matter where I sum the moments so let's just sum the moment about this point over here okay so if I want to sum my moments about this point over here I still know that they have to equal zero so let's sum it over here if I go left to right I'm gonna have oh I have that moment at A which was 1240 pound inches positive okay AX going straight through doesn't cause a movement AY oh that's that's got value 80 pounds going up which is negative rotation so minus 80 pounds times 8 plus 20 so 28 inches okay plus 200 pounds times 20 inches minus 300 pounds times well if this is 28 18 this has to be 10 times 10 inches and then the 180 is coming straight through all of this should equal zero so when I get my calculator out and check I have 1240 80 28 times minus 200 20 times plus 300 10 times minus and I indeed get zero equals zero okay and one of the things I want you to notice is when we summed about point A this 300 pound force caused a positive moment about point A because we were circling back to the left okay positive oops here we are positive moment when I summed moments about this end of the beam that 300 pounds is now causing a negative moment because we're circling clockwise so it's not a positive moment down here because it's going up it's a positive moment because of the direction of the circling around negative if we're circling this way so when you're doing moments remember it doesn't have to do with the direction of my force that has to do with summing forces x and summing forces y the positive and negative moment comes from if I'm a clock handle and I push up clockwise is negative if I'm a clock handle going around this point and I push down okay counterclockwise is positive moment positive moment a y negative moment